Some reptiles make amazing pets, and I think that there are five that make the best pet reptiles that you could possibly own, so we're going to go over them today. Today, the five best reptiles, that's this video. I'm Adam, this is Jerry, this is Wiggins Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. help from my buddy Jerry here we're gonna go through the five best reptiles in my opinion that are the best for newer or even advanced keepers these are just the ones that I would suggest to be the easiest to keep but the most fun as well right so we're not gonna go over things like tree frogs which aren't reptiles by the way but they're not handleable I think the criteria here is that they're fun to handle they're fun to watch they're easy to take care of and they're not really a burden on your life in that you're taking care of them 24 7 and that's part of your job. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not going to handle each one, but I'm going to handle a few of them. So let's go ahead and start with number five, the Western Hognose Snake. This girl here, this is Ekans. She is probably the most asked about reptile on my entire channel. She's in the thumbnails a lot. She's uh, my display picture or whatever you want to call it. I think that she is very impressive because hognose snakes are really cool to start with, right? They've got that cool little shovel face. Um, they're not constrictors, so they feel kind of derpy when you're handling them. They don't feel like a python or a corn snake when you're handling them. So they're a little bit different. They have that cool factor that a lot of other snakes don't have, and they've got a really cool pattern. Like, for example, a regular looking or normal or classic uh, hognose snake, such as my buddy Arbok here, they actually have a very similar pattern to the Massasauga rattlesnake. There's several other types of snakes that kind of have the same sort of patterning and coloration, but with hognose snakes, I think it's very distinct, it's very unique, and there's a ton of different morphs that you can choose from. But here's why I think that they're really great for someone who might not be an advanced keeper. They don't take a lot of requirements. I've got a full video right here if you want to watch it all about hognose snakes. They're the first snake that I ever got. I think that they're uh, great to learn about snakes if you're not super sure that you want to get into it. And they look a little bit different with the keeled scale as well. So not just the patterning, uh, which can be different depending on the morph. Anacondas, for example, look different than a regular or a classic type of hognose snake. And we're talking about Western hognose snakes here. But also, they've got that keeled scale. Very interesting. They're not super susceptible to mites. It doesn't mean that they can't get them, um, but they have a very different scale than a lot of other type of animals, a lot of other type of snakes. But one thing that's really unique about these guys is that they're rear fang venomous. So some people will dispute this, but basically they have an advanced saliva that could cause an allergic reaction if you get bit. I've never had this reaction. I don't know anyone personally who's ever had this reaction. Most of the time, nothing happens. And it's very rare that you'll get bit because these guys in the wild will play dead before they'll bite you. It is the most hilarious thing, the little drama queens. But also, they're going to do this false strike with their mouth open at you as well. So they'd rather just bluff strike at you and just headbutt you with that little snout of theirs than actually bite you anyway, unless they think that you're food, in which case they're going to come screaming out with their mouth open as soon as you open the tub or the enclosure. So number five is Western Hognose Snakes. Great addition to any collection and maybe your first snake. I think it'd be a great option too. All right, number four. Not your turn yet, Jerry. Number four is another snake. In my opinion, the fourth best that you could possibly have are corn snakes. Now, a lot of you are scratching your head. Why do you have them so low on the list? Well, there's a few reasons. Well, let's go over why they're great, first of all. They're not big. They don't take a lot of room in your house. Their care requirements in terms of, in terms of heating, humidity, temperature, uh, lighting, all of that is really easy. But here's why I would put them so low on the list in comparison to a lot of other people who will talk about lists like this. They're really flighty. And I think there's two main concerns with people who aren't super uh, used to snakes or super advanced or uh, experienced with snakes. And that's being bitten, one, and two, how quickly they move. And I think that's why the next snake on the list I put above the corn snake. Corn snakes are flighty and they are more apt to bite you than some other types of snakes in my experience. Now a lot of people will put these guys number one, and this is just my opinion. I do think they're great snakes, that's why they're on the list in the first place. They don't take a lot to feed, right, in terms of money uh, in time. They're really easy to get to feed too, which number five, hognose snakes, it's another reason they're five instead of four. They've got this issue with going on hunger strike sometimes. Corn snakes don't really have that. Also, they're constrictor snakes, so they will hold on to you a little bit easier than a hognose snake, which a child might drop because they don't kind of constrict you and hold on to you as much as you hold on to them. 
but also they're a manageable size. That's the main reason that they're where they are. It's just that they're a little bit flighty for my taste. I don't really like snakes that are jumping and darting everywhere. They're just a little bit too fast. And this is just me presenting the facts and you can kind of scramble it up or add or subtract or whatever you want for your five best. That's why corn snakes are number four. All right, let's get on to number three. The number three best pet reptile, in my opinion, ball pythons. Ball pythons, I think, are amazing pet reptiles. And I know a lot of people will say, well, they need humidity requirements. They're a little bit bigger. They need a bigger space. They go on hunger strikes. And all those things are true. In comparison to a corn snake or even a hognose snake, they need a lot of room. I mean, I, I, you can watch the ball python care guide right here if you want to know a little bit more about them or everything you need to know, in my opinion. But they're going to be a little bit bigger. Not too big, not to be scary, but they're impressive. In my opinion, they're more impressive than a corn snake and because of this, they feel less delicate and less fragile. They're very hardy, so are corn snakes, but in my opinion, ball pythons, as long as you can get that humidity thing right, you're good to go. Heat and humidity are the one thing, or the two things, I should say, that a lot of people will put them lower on a list for. And I think these are actually really easy as long as you do it right. They're not really, it's not rocket science to keep these guys, and there's a reason that they're one of the most popular, if not the most popular snake in the entire pet trade. Also, they're going to hold on to you, and these guys will give you a pretty good hug. Not like a boa constrictor or a Burmese python, but when they hold on to you, they hold on to you. And they are big enough where your friends are going to be pretty impressed. When you pull one of these things out of your vivarium or enclosure or rack system or whatever the case is, you are really flighty today, buddy. Holy cow. Another thing, too, in terms of snakes, I can't think of one type of snake, one species of snake, that has so many colorations, morphs, patterns, they look so different one to the next and even in my collection I don't have any crazy uh, morphs by any means, but Pikachu looks completely different than Medusa, but the only difference is Medusa has one allele that is attached to the albino gene and Pikachu has two so Medusa's het for albino She carries the, the trait, but she doesn't show it Pikachu does and then we've got bananas and we've got orange dreams and we've got spiders and we've got all sorts of different ball pythons and you can watch the entire video about my ball python collection right here if you want. Holy, just watch the whole video before you go to these cards, please, for crying out loud, Jerry. But they're less flighty. These guys will sit and have a movie with you. They'll have a movie night. They'll watch one with you. And you don't have to be constantly like, where is the snake going, you know? And this is something that I love about leopard geckos, which is why I've always got a leopard gecko on my shoulder or in my hands when I do these videos. Because I never have to worry about them. I can worry about making this video rather than what Jerry or Sarah or whoever the leopard gecko is, is doing, right? This guy's a little bit more flighty than the other geckos, but with ball pythons, they're pretty simple, they're pretty easy, and they're really not likely to bite you, in my opinion. Now, I shouldn't say that because I'm about to go handle a bunch filming the next video, but in my opinion, in my experience, they don't take a lot of effort. Just make sure that if they're on a hunger strike, don't freak out, watch a bunch of other videos, do a bunch of research on these guys, they do take a little bit more care requirements than, say, a leopard gecko, but in terms of snakes, that's my number one option, which means that we're going to go on to number two. And it's still not your time to shine, Jerry. Number two is crested geckos. Now, I did a video a little while ago about leopard geckos versus crested geckos and which one I think is the best beginner pet lizard. Now, this isn't a beginner list. It's just a best pet list. So I'm going to put crested geckos below leopard geckos. And I'm going to do this for a simple reason. I think that in terms of of taking care of animals if you're not an expert something that's really important is that they don't feel fragile to you because a fragile animal you don't even want to touch the thing right because uh, the tail might fall off or you might rip its skin with some other types of lizards right but with crested geckos they're not super fragile but they still do have that tail that falls off pretty much whimsically you know like just on a that was a close one. <laughs> so Crested Geckos, just to cap it off with these guys, they come in a few different morphs, but not a crazy amount, such as other types of geckos, which have hundreds of morphs. But they don't take up a lot of space in your house either. And they're really good with bioactive enclosures. If you want something that is beautiful to look at, not just the animal, but the enclosure, Crested Geckos can't be beat. These guys, I mean, maybe if you want to get into like green tree pythons or tree boas or something like that that would be considered a display animal more than anything else but in terms of something you can also handle crested geckos are number one in my opinion for most beautiful enclosures that you can set up yourself pretty cheaply and pretty easily without a ton of effort or knowledge so that's why I'm gonna put these guys 
At number two, you can handle them. They're nice to look at. They're not fast. They don't bite you. And even if they do, you probably don't even feel it. They're super easy to feed. Literally, you put powder into a cup with water and you stir it up and that's it. They are the most simple, in my opinion, of all the animals that you could possibly keep. These guys are a dream come true for someone who's new to reptiles and doesn't want to spend hours and hours and hours every week taking care of your reptiles. All right, buddy, your time to shine. Number one is leopard geckos. You guessed it. And the reason for this is they're so much fun to look at. They're fun to handle. They don't take a bunch of effort. This is the flightiest leopard gecko that I have in my entire collection. This is the flightiest one. Look at him. But also, he's very cool. He's good to look at. They've got this really cool little tail. They do drop their tails, or they can drop their tails. I've never had a gecko drop their tail for me, but they do grow back. They're not gonna grow back as beautifully as they are created out of the egg, but they do grow back. And they're a little bit harder to drop than a crested gecko. A crested gecko, they'll just drop their tail, like I said before, on a whim for no apparent reason. I've come, I've had a few crested geckos where one day they've got a tail and the next day they don't, and they're in their enclosure by themselves and there's nothing around, not crickets, not another gecko, nothing, and they just drop their tail for no reason. Now, of course, these live happy and long lives, but with crest or uh, leopard geckos, rather, I've never had this issue one time, not ever. Also, they're pretty slow, which is great for keepers who don't want to be tracking down or chasing their animal or worrying about them, like darting across a wall. These guys will not do that to you. They can't climb walls. They've got eyelids, so they look a little bit different than other geckos, which has that cool factor. There's a million different morphs, it, me it feels like. Not a million, but literally hundreds of morphs. So it's really interesting that you can have two or three geckos and they all look completely different. Or you, if you really get into it and you have 12 geckos, they can all look completely different. And you're never going to run out of geckos to choose from, depending on what you like. They're also really easy to feed. I mean, a variety of live insects, so they're, they're much harder, in my opinion, than a crested gecko to feed. But what really sets them apart is they feel very hardy. This lizard doesn't feel like I'm going to crush it in my hands. It does. I feel like I could pass this lizard over to a child and I wouldn't be scared that it's going to injure the lizard. It's pretty common sense. And also, they've got these cool little claws, so they do kind of hold on to you. And if you want to let it crawl on your shoulder or your shirt, you're not going to have to worry about it falling off. And that's why I always have a leopard gecko in most of my videos, because I can have an animal, you guys can look at something the entire time I'm talking, and I don't have to worry about where it's going or what it's doing. It's not going to jump off onto the wall. And their care requirements, crested geckos are a little bit easier. You don't need heat, you don't need lighting, you don't need UVB. Uh, it's really simple, but with these guys, same sort of thing, low humidity, so you don't have to worry about that. Basically, the, t the humidity of your house is fine. All you need is a heating pad if you want to use uh, under tank heating, or you could use a light bulb if you want. A couple of hides, loose substrate if you choose to, but... Uh, what's safe for everybody so I don't get skewered in the comment section you can just use like paper towel or paper or something like that it's really simple and they can live their entire lives in a 20 gallon enclosure so they don't take up a lot of space they're really really simple and they're gonna live a long life for you you really have to screw up to hurt these guys with that being said no matter what you choose if you choose something on this list or that's not on this list do your research and do your observations when you bring these guys home make sure you're doing it right I hate seeing these people bring home an animal and then they lose interest and then all of a sudden their animal gets sick or they forget to feed it. Make sure that you're in for the long haul and as soon as you see that I don't want to have an animal anymore or I'm getting bored of this animal, I haven't gotten to see it in three days, get rid of it. Give it to someone who's going to take care of it. Find a pet shop that will be able to source a home for you. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. We can do new videos every Monday and Thursday, which means that I'm going to see you on Thursday.